everybody. Welcome back. It sure was a week last week. My goodness. Um, and I forgot the papers for my Chemex. But that's okay. I'll put it together here. We had a time. Um, we were on the beach. I posted a couple of uh, videos of making coffee. I took the AeroPress with me. And it turned out really well. I didn't bring any coffee with me. Um, what I did do was I went to Publix. And this year they actually had the Bones Coffee Company stuff on a, an end cap instead of in the regular coffee aisle. Because that's where I went searching. I went searching in the Publix's coffee aisle and couldn't find it. So I settled for something. And then Matt came around the corner and said, hey, look, it's Bones Coffee over here. And I'm like, oh, please, I would rather have that. So I went and got, they had the fruity ones, which I'm not really into, but they had this, the s'mori time, which is great. And it's ground. So I didn't need a grinder. I didn't bring a grinder with me. So I was able to have it pre-ground and delicious and it was great. It was great on the beach. There were some cold days on the beach. Um, I mean, it's March for crying out loud. And a giant storm actually had gone through the night before. So the sea was pretty up there. And it took a couple, it took about a day for us to get into the water. And then, I mean, we had fun from then on. It was great. It was a great week. I got to go to the Island Roasters. Unfortunately, they were not roasting coffee while I was there. So I really didn't get to get anything on the inside. Um, which, you know, is unfortunate, but that's, I mean, it's not their problem. It's my problem. I was able to, and it's a very funny short story. I went in, I f immediately saw the Peruvian. The Peruvian was the exact same place it was last year. So I immediately went to it and got it. I tried to find the Timor in the same area. Couldn't find it. Um, instead, I got this Guatemalan, which is a honey and orange. It says a clean finish. I'll be the judge of that. And both of these are medium roasts, which is great. So I'm pretty excited about this. I have not opened it up. It smells nice to the little hole. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's all organic. It is a pound. Someone pointed out in the short video I did that it's nice that these aren't in 12 ounces, you know, because they're in pounds. They're in pound bags, you know. And they're about $17.99, I think which was, you know, pretty good for coffee of this quality. It tastes really nice. And then I, I, we went to leave the store and I turned to look one more time and I, my eyes went right to the Timor, right? I found it. It was in one of the back racks. And I'm like, well, you know what? Um, I, I missed out. Uh, I'm not going back and getting another one. Having three, basically four, was enough, I think, to bring back. So, and speaking of four... I tease this a little bit. Um, this was up on front of the register. It was sitting there, had a big sign. It's Kona coffee roasted with Aloha. This is a dark roast. I'm pretty excited about it. it. I had them grind it at the store because I wanted it ground in the fashion that they felt, you know, was ground properly. So I think they ground it for pour over. So, but this is eight ounces and this eight ounces was $32. <laughs> So, so Kona coffee, I'm pretty excited to give it a try. It's here. It's ready to go. It smells great. Um, the, one of the friends that we were vacationing with said he enjoyed Kona coffee. He said it was very smooth. I can't wait to get into that. Let's start with the Kona. Why not? Perfect. Let me get my scale. I'm all out of sorts today. So here we go. Got scale on. Meow. Lady says hello. Yes, she does. And I'm going to measure out. I don't even need that, do I? Let's just do it in the bag. Yeah, it's pre-ground. I got to get used to pre-ground stuff. So what do we normally do? Normally do seven grams uh, for 200 milliliters of water. So let's do 14. And this is dark. Oh. Did I not? I didn't zero it, did I? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. All right. So let's try not to touch the paper. We're going to put 400 grams of water in this vessel is what we're going to do. I know that says 32 grams. To me, this looks, this just doesn't look like 32 grams. I'm, I may need to change the batteries in this thing. Um, 
Where are we at here? Okay. Ooh, right on time. Look at that. Right on time. It's going to take me a minute to get back onto a schedule. Because a whole week of... I kind of slept in a little bit, or at least I tried to. And then, you know, it's just a little all over the place. So, all right. Get our bloom going here. There we go. I've watched people actually just put water in the middle and then just kind of let it kind of lava itself out from the middle and kind of soak everything. I guess at some point I'm going to have to try that. Five more seconds here. My hand is warm. There we go. All right. Let's get it going. I think, it was, I think I've seen um, individuals, Japanese coffee houses do that. They just kind of pour it from the center and don't have as much agitation maybe. I don't know. Where are we at here? 300. God, it seems like I could put more in there. 480. Maybe it was just the way it was ground. It looked different. I put put like 30 grams in there. Let's go for 500. Here we go. As stated, I said it was very smooth, um, very tasty. So I'm pretty excited, especially since I had them grind it to see I mean, it was a huge, that grinder's huge. It's like one of those ones you get, you, you see in the store, what were in the coffee places where you're like, I, you know what, that coffee looks great. And that grinder, I could use that, but I don't know. It, there's a couple of different reasons now. I mean, before it seemed very intimidating and I didn't want to bother with it. Um, now it just seems like, when do those grinders get cleaned out? And what kind of coffee went through it last? And how much retention do those big industrial grinders have? And there's just a lot of questions that I have now. Whereas before, the questions were just more or less, um, why bother? Um, what's the point? And boy, that just looks like something that I'm just going to mess up. <laughs> so it's a very interesting grind that they've got going on here. This may be a little bit finer than the uh, Chemex is used to. It's very interesting. The smell is very unique. Um, not something that I'm used to at all. Just watch it disappear. The bottom gets a little sludgy. I see it breaks down into, it's just so low. It's, it just seems like a very small amount of coffee for what it says was 30 grams. Are we still pouring? We're dripping. We're dripping a little bit here. All of my batteries for the GoPro are drained. So, and I didn't plug them in yesterday like I meant to. I, I'm going with the iPhone shotgun mic set up here. So, just for funsies this morning. Okay. Well, that seems pretty good. About the three. Wow. It's not a bad drawdown at all, really. About three minute. Three and a half minute drawdown. It's very dark in color. Well, it's a dark roast, so yes, of course it's going to be dark. But I wonder if they just feel like dark a Kona coffee is is more of a dark roasty kind of coffee, so that's what they do with it. I don't know. Thirty two dollars for eight ounces. It definitely they're very. It, it was a small little thing, and they're like it's back, and then there were like two bags left. I don't know if it was one of those ploys where, you know, they have 20 stocked in the back and they've just got two out there. Look, you could be buying the last cone of coffee. I don't know. It's always good marketing, so you can't really fault them for doing that. But the, the product is out there, so, you know, it doesn't mean you can't buy it. It just means, you know, they're, they're just trying to show how special it is. We'll give it a second to cool off here. It's very, very, very hot. So we did get to go to Disney Springs. That was really cool. I didn't know if we were going to or not. It was fun. Uh, Disney Springs is a neat place. It's just a gigantic Disney-themed mall. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, to me, that's not a bad thing. The unfortunate part about Universal Walk is that you have to pay for it because their parking lot and the Universal Walk itself 
is the beginning of the park itself. So you have to pay to park when you get there, which I don't know, is it 20, 30 bucks? I forget how much it is in the long run. That you don't have to pay to get into the the the, the universal walk itself. It's just that there's pay to parking. Whereas Disney Springs is just a mall. So they have these giant parking facilities that you can park in that doesn't they don't cost anything. So that's kind of a one up for Disney, I think, when it comes to their outdoor mall thing. Universal's got cheeseburger in paradise. So I, you know, I Universal, I'd, I'd pay the 30 bucks to go to Universal. Anyhow, so we went and it's always about the pins for me. These pins are so fun. This is Stitch. Of course it's Stitch. They're all Stitch, except for Baymax. I like this one. I'm trying to keep it together. And this one, he's just got pineapple rings for glasses. It's so cute. And then here's Baymax. And Sushi? I think it's Sushi. Matt likes Baymax. I like Baymax too. Um, and this is an older one. Um, I actually really like the design of this one. I think it's really cool. The Pride Collection. And the Mouse Here Spin. And then this is a very old one. Um, I just saw it and thought it was absolutely adorable. I don't know how old this is. Let me double check here real quick. Disney. No, just Disney. Disney China. That's all you get. Disney China. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a little almost steampunky Stitch. I love Stitch. Stitch is amazing. He's so cool. He's so cool. He is really cool. He's really funny. They had a ride at Disney a long time ago where you would, it's Stitch Escapes or Stitch something like that, where you would be in a seat and it was like 5D. Because, um, you know, the 3D is in your face and then the 4D is like the stuff that happens to your seats. Well, this was 5D, which means he would burp in your face because he ate a chili dog and then he'd burp the chili dog in your face and it, the, the spray would come out. And then you'd get a little like a little water in certain parts because there was water happening. It was fantastic. Um, and adorable. And I, I love Stitch. So anywho, so Kona coffee, I don't know a great deal about it. I know it comes from Hawaii. I know that it is incredibly expensive for that reason. I assume this one is dark roasted. I, I was in Publix looking at coffee and some of the more expensive coffees said that they were from Hawaii, but then you would read the fine print and the fine print would say 10% coffee beans from Hawaii. And it's like 10% of the beans used in this coffee were from Hawaii. And it's like, what, what is that? That doesn't even make any sense. How are you going to taste any kind of difference with just 10% of beans? Number one. Number two, that just seems like a gigantic lie. You know, uh, <laughs> I just, if 10% of your car was washed, you would be very upset, you know, or you know, they, we put 10% oil in your car, you know, that, that just, it's just so weird. That just doesn't seem like it should be a thing. Uh, but apparently it is. And then they can upcharge you, you know, $10 over a normal bag of coffee for it in the coffee aisle. Weird. I do not know what the percentage is. I don't even know if there is a percentage. Um, generally, I mean, it's like this, this is the Peruvian is, you know, I, I, I just, I just think that it's a fair trade. And then I think this Guatemalan is just from Guatemala and it's fair trade. So, I mean, I think that's the extent of it. I don't, I think that if it were for some, from somewhere else or blended with something else, they would mention it on the coffee uh, bag. I don't know. I would, I would like to give them that benefit of the doubt because their coffee is amazing. So anyway, let's see the smoothness. It's very dark. It is so dark. Since it's been sitting there cooling, it has gotten darker. Ooh, hmm. Kind of smoky. Um, very smooth. Agreeable. Agreeable about the smooth. I want to put that through the maca pot. I wonder what that would be like. We may have to try that tomorrow. Hmm. That would be fun. Maybe we'll wait and experiment with a Kona next week. We'll get through the other two island coffees and uh, see how that goes. 
Mm. You would, with a dark roast, you would think there would be a lot of bitterness, but this is incredibly smooth coffee. There's very little bitterness. I mean, even compared to a medium that I might have up there from a different roasting company, this, this, this dark roast is incredibly smooth. The finish is really nice. The flavors are difficult. It's almost like, kind of like, almost like a nutty taste to it. I don't get any fruit at all, but then again, you know, my palate is really limited in its expertise whatever you want to call it. But I would say that that's incredibly smooth and the finish is just absolutely fantastic. And it is just, it's just very, there's no bitter, barely, barely any bitter to this, to this dark roast. I will enjoy that all morning. That's great. Cool. Well, your first experience with Kona coffee. What are you, what are you going to do, but be happy about that. 32 bucks for an eight ounce bag though. Mm. Well, there you go. And we're back. So we've made it back just fine. The plane trip was great. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow. There were really no bumps. I mean, there was some turbulence, but in general, travel was pretty fine. <laughs> I think we had a delay on the way home for about 45 minutes. It was about a 45 minute delay. Getting down here, there were terrible storms apparently rolling through. Somehow we made it, not only made it here on time, but landed perfectly. It must have just gotten through the storming. Because, I mean, it, it, I think someone said that down there, I think Granddad maybe said there was hail. Um, oh, yeah, and then we visited my granddad. We'll, we can talk about that too later. But right now, first show of the Tuesday after vacation, I'm, I'm feeling great. We had a wonderful time. I'm excited to talk about it more tomorrow. Today, we would, I just wanted to get this and show. And like, look. Kona coffee, something I never thought I would ever be able to try. It was down there uh, on a whim and boom, it's delicious. I really like it. Is it worth $32? No. <laughs> um, it's delicious, but I think you're just buying a type of coffee. And I mean, when I, when I get into this Peruvian, I know it's going to taste better. And then this Guatemalan with its promises of honey and orange is already winning my heart, you know? So is it, is it worth $32 to a basic consumer? No, no, I don't think it is. I think you're going to find local roasters doing uh, an Arabica uh, or like Guatemala or, you know, uh, a Colombia or even a Puerto Rico, um, you're going to find that those flavors are going to be great if you enjoy coffee from that roaster. Now, I'm not saying this isn't great, it's great, but I just don't see the bump up in quality matching the bump up in price. Um, $32 for an eight ounce bag. $17.99 for a pound? Mm. Sold. Happy with that. And again, that comes down probably to my lack of the tasty tasty tastes. I don't have deep, deep understanding of specific small notes, you know, and again, I, I did this in a Chemex. It could be different for the clever. It could be different for AeroPress that I haven't even unpacked yet. You know, it'll be different in the maca pot for sure. And it's a nice dark roast. So I'll, I'm pretty excited to try a dark roast in that maca pot to see what the color looks like and how it tastes. So, and see if this mild deliciousness stays the way it is even when concentrated in the maca pot. I'm very excited. Anyhow, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Tomorrow we'll talk more about the trip. There's, it's not eventful. It's not a rocky road. I mean, it's pretty, was pretty down to earth, our trip down to New Smyrna and the enjoyment that we had at the beach. Don't expect a thrill ride or any kind of a roller coaster adventure. Thank you for watching this morning. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. I'm seeing 695 subscribers. That's absolutely insane from where I was last year at this time, which I think was around 97, 98 subscribers. So, and I know a lot of that is due to the Star Trek and not so much of it to the coffee. But I know a lot of you have subscribed for the coffee and the talk and whatnot, and I really appreciate it, and I appreciate you. So thank you so much for getting me up there to 695. Here's to 1,000 by the end of the year. That could happen. I would be very excited to see that. How cool would that be? Yeah. We'll see, though. I'm having fun. I hope you are, too. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye.